coming at y'all with my messy bun today to do my August TBR. However, this month we're doing things differently here. Basically, I have sort of just been struggling with my reading. I've been feeling off. I don't know what it is, if there's something in the air. Reading just hasn't been the vibe for me. However, I had a great time during Summerween because I was 100% in the mood for like horror and spooky books and I had like just the best week reading what I was in the mood for. So I decided that for the month of August, I'm not going to be doing my typical monthly TBR and instead I'm gonna be mood reading the whole month. Now, a little background on me, I'm not a mood reader, okay? I am a TBR bitch. I need a TBR, I need a structure. So this is gonna be an experiment to see if I can be a mood reader. I feel like it's gonna be a little bit difficult, a little bit putting me outside of my comfort zone, but I'm excited about it. So I thought today, instead of doing my August TBR, which I do have a couple books that I am for sure gonna be reading in August and we'll talk about those, but I also thought it'd be fun since we are over halfway through the year to actually check in with the TBRs that I've done this year and see how well I've actually done on them, if I'm actually reading the books that I'm putting on my TBRs. I saw Megan from Meg with Books do this and it seemed fun. In my head, I feel like I'm really good at sticking to my TBRs. I do know that every once in a while, I have a month where I just fail at it. So we're gonna look back at all of the TBRs that I've done so far and if I've actually completed those books. So first, let me tell you guys about the books that I 100% will be reading in August. These are the, the only for sure TBR books that I have. I don't know why I'm talking with my hands a lot today. I normally talk with my hair. So when my hair is up, my hands like don't know what to do, okay? Touching my hair is like a stimming thing for me. And when my hair's up, my hands are just, they're just floating. <laughs> So I apologize. So for my Patreon book club, if you don't know, I have a Patreon, we have a book club on there every month. I pick a few selections and let my patrons vote. And this month they voted for Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey. This is a horror book about this girl whose father was a serial killer and now she's a grown adult and she's returning to her childhood home, which is the scene of the crime. Her mother still lives there. I don't know, it sounds interesting. The blurb says that it is for fans of Netflix's The Haunting of Hill House and HBO's true crime masterpiece, I'll Be Gone in the Dark. So far, I've been seeing either five-star reviews for this or one-star reviews, which really piques my interest. You guys know I love books that have mixed opinions, so I'm excited to see where I fall on this and uh, discuss this with my patrons. I feel like this book could have some interesting discussions around it. So this is the one that we will be reading in August. And then I also, every month, I pick a book from my Patreon TBR suggestion box where my patrons get to suggest a book for me to read on my TBR and I choose one. So normally I would randomly select it, but going with the theme of mood reading this month, I'm going to actually select whichever one I want to read most. I haven't like read through them. It's probably gonna have to be a book that I already own because I'm not trying to buy anything right now. Ooh, okay, here's one. Hold on, I own this, let me go grab it. Okay, so Caitlin recommended Confessions by Kone Minato, which is a book that I've really, really been wanting to read. I've been trying to fit it into my TBRs. It hasn't happened. This is a revenge thriller about this teacher whose daughter was murdered or died as a result of something that her students did. And so I, I believe that this book follows the last lecture that she's delivering to her students that sets in motion a plot for revenge. I've heard really, really great things about this. I love a revenge story. I also heard that this has a movie, so it could be fun to read the book and watch the movie and like vlog both of them. I don't know, but thank you, Caitlin, for the recommendation. So those are the two books that I 100% will be reading in August, but that is the only TBR that I have. Everything else is just gonna be based on my mood and whatever I feel like doing, and we'll see how it goes. I mean, this could be a total fail, but I'm excited to try to be a mood reader. The mood reader life seems very appealing to me. I just, we're gonna see how it goes. So now, let's check in with, whoop, hold on. My friend just texted me about Love Island, which by the way, the day that I'm filming this is the finale of Love Island. Very sad that it's over. So let's check in with 
all of the TBRs that I've done so far this year. So we're gonna be looking at January through July and just going through each of the months. I'll tell you what I read, what I didn't read. So starting with January, I had eight books on my TBR. Here's all eight. And out of those eight TBR books, I read seven of them. The only one that I didn't read was The Killing Moon, which I actually DNF. I was reading this for, I think, Aaron's book club and a lot of people in the book club weren't liking it. I read like 20 pages and then was like, you know what, not for me, gonna put it down. I love N.K. Jemisin, but this one just wasn't clicking for me. However, in total, January, I read 13 books. So I read the seven books on my TBR plus another six. January, I think, was a good reading month for me. All right, moving on to February, I had five books on my TBR. Here were the five. And out of those, I read three of them. The two that I didn't read were Lola and the Millionaires and then Real by Kennedy Ryan. Lola and the Millionaires, I didn't end up reading because some people had told me there was a book I needed to read before it and some people were saying that I could just go straight into Lola and I was getting confused, getting mixed signals, so I was like, I'm just gonna put it down for now. And then Real by Kennedy Ryan is a book that I keep meaning to pick up, I keep intending to pick up, but for some reason, I just have a block in my brain with this book. I don't know why. I think partially because I know it has chronic illness rep and I've heard from a lot of my friends who have chronic illnesses that it's very emotional in that subject. I will read it eventually. I just, I feel like it needs to be like the right moment. In February, I did end up reading seven books total, even though only three of them were my TV books. This was the month that I did my reading booktubers favorite books of 2021. So most of the books that I read for that video weren't on my initial TBR. And February was an okay reading month for me in terms of quantity, but I did read a lot of great books in this month. So it kind of evens out. Moving on to March, I had seven books on my TBR and I read all seven. I think this might be the only month where I read every single book on my TBR. I also read a total of 14 books in this month. So I read the seven on my TBR, plus another seven. The quantity of books I read and the quality of books I read this month, I think were one of the best. Read Still Beating. I read Legends and Lattes, which are like two of my now like favorite books ever. So March was a very good and successful reading month for me, which brings us into April, <laughs> which um, April was kind of a fail. So I had seven books on my TBR in April. Here's the seven. And I only ended up reading four of them. Not only did I only read four of them, I only read four books total in the month. The three books for my TBR that I didn't read, The Wolf and the Woodsman, I actually DNF'd because I, I put this book on my TBR thinking it was a different book. I thought that it was For the Wolf. And I knew what the plot of For the Wolf was. So I started reading The Wolf and the Woodsman and I was like, very confused because it wasn't I, like I'm like this is not what I thought it was and it took me a good 50 pages to realize I was just reading the wrong book so I decided to DNF it for now I will go back to it eventually but I didn't want to keep reading it because I had wanted to read For the Wolf and I felt like I was doing The Wolf and the Woodsman a disservice so I put that down and then the other two books that I didn't read in this month were Ruthless Creatures and Scarred. This was kind of the month that I realized that when it comes to the romance genre, I'm very much a mood reader. So going forward after this month, I kind of stopped putting so much romance on my TBRs because unlike other genres where I really like to plan what I read far in advance, when it comes to romance, when I wanna read a romance book, I wanna read it right now or never. So these are two books that I do want to go back to eventually when I'm in the mood for them, but it just did not happen in April. May, I had six books on my TBR and I read four of them. So like not terrible, but it also was a smaller TBR. However, I read nine books total in May. So May was definitely not as bad a reading month as April was. <laughs> the two books from my TBR that I didn't read, Malice, I ended up DNFing. I was just confused. She was confusing. I read a good like 75 pages and could not tell you a thing about the world, the magic, like anything. I was very, very confused. I might go back to it at some point, but for some reason, my brain and that book were not clicking. And then the other book that I didn't even get to was Fevered Star for the sole reason that I have the audiobook on hold at my library and I'm still like 14th in line. <laughs> so eventually when I get that audiobook, I will circle back to Fevered Star. June, I had seven books on my TBR and I read six of them and nine books total for the month. So I read the six for my TBR and then three more. This was the month that I did my screen time for reading vlog where I swapped my screen time and 
changed it to hours reading instead. So I did get a lot of reading done this month and a lot of really great stuff. I read Slewfoot, which was a five star, Sword Heart, which was a five star, Lotus, which was a five star. So I think June was also like June and what did I say? March were my two like best reading months in terms of finding new favorites. And then lastly, we have July, which I had eight books on that TBR. Here's the eight. And out of those, I read six of them. I'm actually filming this on August 1st and I'm currently halfway through one of the books. So I'm not counting it as being read yet, but it's six and a half. However, in July, I read 14 books total because I participated in Summerween where I read I think seven books in the week. So the two books that I didn't end up getting to was Seven Days in June, which I am still planning on reading. I just wasn't able to get to it before the month was over. And then Give Me More, I'm currently in the middle of. So it will be finished, it's just not right now. So <laughs> looking at this, I have realized that there is no consistency when it comes to how many books I pick for my TBR every month. Some months was eight, five, seven. It seems like seven is like the average. I really have no thought process behind how many I choose. I kind of just am like choosing them until I decide I'm done. But I also noticed that the months that I have a smaller TBR were the months that I didn't read as many, which I don't know what the correlation between that is. Maybe because it's a smaller selection, I'm less inclined to pick them up. Whereas the months where I had like seven books, eight books, I read all of them or all but one. To give you like final statistics, I had 48 books on my TBRs from January to July. Out of those 48, I read 37 of them. Three were DNFs, so that leaves eight left unread. Here's those eight. They're all ones that I'm still intending on reading at some point, but I feel like overall, I do pretty good with my TBRs. I This is definitely like, statistical proof that I am a TBR reader. So I guess at the end of August, I will be really interested to see how I do with mood reading this month and if I read more, if I read less, if I enjoy reading more. Yeah, that is gonna be it for this video. Sorry if you came in expecting to see me pulling stuff out of my little jar. The jar will be back in September, I promise. I, I know that I will not become a full-time mood reader. I can guarantee that right now. I will be going back to the TBRs. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you are a TBR reader or if you're a mood reader or if you're like a little bit of both. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!